Fernando de Noronha Maritime National Park lies off the coast of Brazil. Life flourishes here, nurtured by the warm waters of the South Equatorial Current that flows around its 21 islands. It is a strategic location, especially for sea turtles, since the reptiles born here will go on to populate the Atlantic and Caribbean as a whole. Mark's great passion is sharks. He has been studying them in the waters around Fernando de Noronha for 20 years and has achieved his dream to open up the archipelago's undersea world to as many people as possible with no need for masks or snorkels. The shark enthusiasts created the Nevi, a boat with a 1.5 meter lens in its hull. Passengers could admire the beauty of the lens without taking the plunge. Visitando o roteiro arqueológico. The boat's patented system allows passengers to observe the island's many fish. The setup suits them as it does the dolphins who follow the craft like faithful companions. At the National Center for Conservation and Sea Turtle Management, a group of researchers are preparing for a crucial mission. Jeff, with his long golden hair, and Matt, have been doing research at the center for five years now. Today they're visiting a beach on the island's south coast to capture sea turtles and analyze their biological data. The beaches remain open during these operations and many bystanders watch the show. It has a layer of greenish grease on its shell, which is why we call it the olive ridley turtle. The species is listed as vulnerable. In other words, it's a species in danger of extinction, very exposed. Now, we record the date, time and place of capture. Meanwhile, still underwater, Jeff catches a turtle too. The captive struggles, making his task almost impossible. This animal is 90 centimeters long. We measure it three times and record the largest figure. This marker is like an ID card. Every time we capture this animal, we can compare the data with what we recorded on previous captures. Houve a desova, então um período de 50 
Matt takes a little organic tissue that will be used to extract a DNA sample. He then marks the reptile, so it will be recognizable the next time they meet. on the beach, turtles glide serenely through the ocean. The Olive Ridley's oval shell is flattened to make it more streamlined, allowing it to achieve a top speed of 35 kilometers an hour. It can hold its breath for 30 minutes and reach a depth of 100 meters. But when there's no need to push itself, it moves unhurriedly through the depths. of the mating season, a male and a female meet, touch and rub against each other. The female has the upper hand and chooses where they will get together. She tests the bed of seaweed, chases away potential rubber necks and floats back down to the ocean floor to wait for the impatient male. Once they have mated, the female heads off, leaving the male to recover on the seabed. South of the island, Mark the shark aficionado and his friend Fabio set off for a dip in shark-infested waters. What time did you get here? We got here a bit later. But the swell is better now. Less strong, you see? The waves are smaller. Armed with his video camera, Mark sets off alone to find his old friends. He dives to a depth of more than 20 meters without seeing any sign of sharks. So he decides to head on into the heart of their territory, a danger zone that he alone can enter.
the diver finally reaches his destination and finds what he's been looking for. The lens of his video camera hungrily devours this grey shark, one of those that populate the reefs of Fernando. With stony gaze and razor-filled jaws, the shark circles steadily around Mark. Closer, ever closer. Mark watches the predator impassively. Yet he's on his guard. Sharks very rarely attack humans, but this one could tear him to pieces in a few seconds. The shark lover returns to the surface, pleased with his find and the footage he shot. He will add today's videos to his copious archives, which he uses to teach the public that sharks are not the monsters they sometimes see in thriller movies. Leo, how did you get to know Noronha? How did it happen? I got to know Noronha when I used to sail with my father. Back then, nobody came from Pernambuco to Noronha. I saw things as a fisherman. Now I'm interested in conservation and understanding animals. I began to do more diving. I keep a photographic record of the species that populate the island. I do the opposite of what I did before. Back then, I caught specimens and collected information after the capture. Today, I interfere as little as possible, diving alone without using breathing apparatus, because the animals are very sharp, and I record their behavior in pictures, photos, and video foto e vídeo o comportamento assim isso isso me fez me aproximar assim de, de como eles são complexos these animals were esses animais, and how they displayed e como sometimes eles conseguem ter um comportamento social que antes eu sequer imaginava né? você imagina tubarão um predador né? uma máquina de comer mas a verdade é que eles são animais que têm um relacionamento cohesion, social uma coesão a leader, liderança and estratégia de ataque which we can clearly see in the pictures. And your Navy project was the result of this curiosity and wanting to go even further? Yes, Navy is a continuation. I like working with anything to do with the sea. It was a new way of showing the Marona Seabed to people. I realized there was a problem with people who didn't like diving, claustrophobics, and elderly people and children who came here and couldn't explore the ocean. Na verdade, é um projeto de acessibilidade. So we did studies to work out what technology we could use to make the undersea world accessible. And you're directly in contact with the sharks. The main thing is to spread knowledge. Yes, but you're actually very happy. Whenever people come to enjoy this experience, when they learn something, when they understand, then it's worth it. And because of all that, I decided I wanted to live here. The people are well intentioned. And I'm surrounded by water. A surgeon fish swims in a natural aquarium that's home to an unrivaled diversity of species. A solitary barracuda searches for prey. A 
a shoal of barracudas glides through the vast waters. They swim in perfect synchronicity in a kind of undersea ballet. To protect the animal species and the coral, the authorities have set very strict rules. A hundred people at most can swim here each day. Sun cream is forbidden to avoid bleaching the coral, and excursions can only last 20 minutes. All this means the species can live safely in their protected zone. A ray glides serenely over the sand, flailing its sting. The effect of its venom are often agonizing and sometimes lethal for humans. Shoals of fish brush across the surface of the rocks, hemmed in by the swell and tides. Largest always go first. Night falls on Fernando Beach and Olive Ridley lays her eggs in the sand. Her sixth sense always leads her back to her birthplace to lay her clutch of 20 to 200 eggs. Her job over, the new mother covers the hole in the sand with her hind flippers and heads back to the water, exhausted. researcher at the National Center for Conservation and Sea Turtle Management inspects the sand at the beaches for signs of laying. Meanwhile, Jeff is back at the office, studying the results of the analyses from their last sea expedition. We will see there. First, we will check the data from yesterday, captures which was between 11 and noon. We did that an hour, didn't we? I will take a piece here. We took the sample yesterday. All the samples are stored here before we stand in for analyze. We came them here. Always nothing the matching numbers. A qual registro? Agora é só enviar. Tá tudo registrado. Now we just have to send them. Everything's recorded. If there are any doubts, we can just come and check here in the field notes. There are the two samples collected yesterday. continues to patrol the beaches of Fernando de Noronha and finds the tracks of a turtle that came to lay eggs in the sand. He has to find the hole, count the eggs and mark it with a stake to warn visitors not to approach.
new day begins in Fernando de Noronha Park. As visitors enjoy the sun, sand and waves, Matt and Jeff's team are talking on the beach. Back when I was studying biology at university, one of my dreams was to work with animals, particularly sea animals, because during my childhood, uh, I lived here on Fernando de Noronha for six years. I was in contact with the sea and sea animals. The time of organization becomes our family in the end. Particularly to me. Because I've been a long way from home for almost six years. We form bounds because of what we are creating here in Fernando de Noronha. Although everything is more complicated here, life is simple, and human relationships have to be sincere. The project's member become genuine family. That's how I see things here. It's very rewarding to work here. It's a dream come true. Everyone shows respect for the team and the animals. Because our priority is the respect and protection of animals. The ideal solution will be to reconcile it all, grow this coming. We realize it's coming and that the island is being developed. I've been here for a little over four years and I've already realized it. I've been here longer than me can tell you even more about the island's development. We devote our life to conserving the whole ecosystem and the whole environment. We have to put whole heart into it. That's why it is. That's why we carry on and we will see how far we can go. A few weeks later, the eggs hatch. The young turtles struggle out of the sand, drawn by the sea. They push with all their might to escape their prison. And they have to watch out for the many lurking predators. Deadly birds circle above their newborn babies. Scientists who have turned the Fernando de Noronha Maritime National Park into a sanctuary.